everything I did was was based on the uh, original Broadway West Side Story musical. Um, I based nothing on the Robert Wise musical, although I love that movie very, very much. The Robert Wise Jerome Robbins West Side Story, love it very, very much. I've seen it numerous times, as everybody my age certainly has. But I had a deep abiding love for the original Broadway musical, and even when I was planning my shots and trying to figure out how to do West Side Story, I only referenced the Broadway album. I never referenced the motion picture Johnny Green arranged score ever. It was always the Broadway album. Well, I think, you know, the, the, you know divisions between un unlike-minded people is, is as old as time itself. Um, but, uh, and, and the divisions between the Sharks and the Jets in 1957, uh, which, which, which inspired those four geniuses to, you know, turn, you know, current events into a musical. Um, uh, those divisions were profound, but not as divided as we find ourselves today. Tony and Maria are not star-crossed lovers. You know, they, they make a connection just with each other's eyes across a very crowded room of dancers, which is the classic thing that happens in all the stage productions of West Side Story. But it's more profound on film because you get to see that connection in close-up, being born. And, and that's the story that I like to follow in this. And those are the characters I'm rooting for to somehow bring the chaos of this territorial and racial divide to bring these two sides together so they can have a life. And, and, and that's been classically and traditionally what West Side Story and Romeo and Juliet that inspired West Side Story to begin with is really all about. Uh, that West Side Story should be, should be made more than just my production. In 20, 30 years, it should be made again. It's, it's, it's such a profound story. It speaks to every generation. It's timeless in the sense that it sh we, sh we should be reminded of that story as often as possible. So I didn't feel like I was claim jumping. I felt like I was simply offering a great classical piece of musical theater to the world again 60 years later. This was a joy-filled experience. Uh, uh, I haven't reached the apogee of such joy. Uh, I don't reach the apogee of this level of joy on every movie I make. Uh, uh, I have been out of my mind happy in the middle of a shot or in the middle of a day or in the, at the end of a shoot, but there was something very special about this that I can't even put into words. It's, it's just a little bit hard to articulate uh, the feeling this gave me and the closure it gave me having lived with these songs uh, 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 for basically since I was a 10-year-old boy growing up in Arizona and, and, and to have been able to fulfill that dream and keep that promise that I made to myself in the back of my mind and that my wife Kate kept bringing back to the front of my mind to remind me, don't break that promise to yourself. You must make West Side Story. Um, I'm grateful and I'll be grateful forever. Well, there was this whole aspect of Tony that was in this now because of what I guess Stephen and Tony Kushner had been thinking up, that he was an ex-convict and that was the reason why he really needed to be out of the Jets now. And that it wasn't just like in the original film, it's sort of like, oh, I gotta be out of that now, I'm, I'm moving on, something great is coming to me. It's like, I'd love to still be in the Jets, these are my guys, but if I try to be in the Jets now, I'm going back to prison and I don't want to go back there. And there's this whole backstory that Tony had written and that Tony, that Tony Kushner had written and that Tony talks about in the show, in the movie, that the reason he went to prison was he beat this kid up so bad, he almost killed him. And Tony felt really guilty about that. Uh, and for a year in prison, he thought about it the whole time. And now that he's out, he really doesn't want to do that anymore. So there was all this, this uh, great backstory to Tony that wasn't there previously in other versions of West Side Story. Uh, and that gave us a big springboard to jump into the film off of. That's a great thing too about this movie is that even though it is a remake of, it, it still takes place in 1957, it shares qualities with the original movie 
some scenes are completely reimagined in a way that does the scene much better. Like Cool, for example, is now the scene between Tony and Riff and a bunch of jets, where instead in the original it's Riff telling his jets that they need to be cool. Everyone who's here is so talented. There's people who are on Broadway, people who have done film, people who haven't. But everyone is talented, passionate, full of love, full of hardworking nature. And we have amazing leaders, obviously. We have Steven Spielberg directing us. So I think that it doesn't matter that some people haven't even done movies before. It's, it might even be better because there's so much excitement that they're on a movie set and they're giving it their all. Steven just wants everyone to have a good time, including himself. And something that he would always say to me is, you still having fun? And I'd say, yeah. He said, good. And even on days where it would be heavy and emotional, I'd still remember what he said and still try to have fun. We're making a movie. And when the energy on the set is positive and everyone is excited, he doesn't want to kill that. So if everyone wants to go see what they just filmed, he's very generous in that way of letting everyone and letting that moment and the momentum of what we're doing push into the next shot and push into the next take. And I think he's very aware of, of that and keeping the vibe on set great. I'm sure that young people are going to be discovering West Side Story for the first time through this movie and the, the music and the story and the show is more than honored in this version. I, I say it all the time, I say it to everyone, we are so lucky to have him in this day and age, to have Steven directing this movie in this day and age because he is very sensitive to what's going on in the world at the moment and he understands how it affects all of us. Um, and there is probably no one on earth who loves West Side Story more than Steven Spielberg. Which I don't think, I think people, people are going to be really surprised by that. But he is taking care of it like it's his baby. This movie is his baby. And he, he's taking care of us. And I'm, I'm grateful every day that he took a chance on, on me. It takes place in 1957 Manhattan, the west side. And um, it, there's a really big transitional period for, the, for San Juan Hill, especially. Which is where all the Puerto Ricans live in 1950s. Um, and there is ever rampant racism as per usual in our world and the people who live in these buildings are being more or less kicked out. They're being compensated, which is something we talk about at the beginning of I Feel Pretty. And throughout the whole film, we really talk about the buildings being demolished so that they can build the Lincoln Center. So it takes place in that, that's the climate of New York is there's white versus Puerto Rican, a lot of fighting and people being kicked out of their homes to build a brand new place for white people, really. I felt like Maria that day. It was really wonderful. And for that, when that first press shot came out and the world lost its mind, everybody was losing their minds over it at this first look of what, what it should have looked like back then. Of like, a, you know, the sharks are a, a rainbow of the Latino community. We have Afro-Latinos, um, we have light-skinned Latinos, we have Latinos from Puerto Rico. It's amazing. It's what it should have looked like. It's what it should have always be. And um, I'm really glad that it was touched upon when that first picture came out. It was really significant in what we all look like and what we're all doing here. It's been really great to have her just as a reference, really. There was one day, I, I haven't had a lot of moments with her, just I don't shoot with her very often. I had. She's unfortunately, she's in the death scene. That's the only day I really had to shoot with her, but she was there for a couple days of rehearsal. And Ansel and I were singing the balcony scene. And after she just looked at me and she said, Maria lives. And that was enough for me. I was like, cool, great. Stamp of approval, we can rap, we're good. Check the gate. Uh, I was just, uh, she's very inspiring. And she's also one of the only role models a lot of us had growing up as a, Latina in the industry, and she's one of the most notable. So for her to be so legendary and to give her time to us, and she's also one of our producers, which we really, we wouldn't be here without her. 
with Steven's help, with the help of the entire creative team, and especially Tony Kushner, like, I've been able to find something really new inside of her and who this character is and something very deep that I think brings out another level of um, of the characters, specifically Bernardo and and Maria. I think we've we've done something really beautiful and uh, I think she's a beautiful representation of not only Puerto Rican women today, <laughs> but of women in general and what we go through and the feelings that we feel but cannot talk about and how hard it is to take a stand for your own goals and your own beliefs and your own ambitions. Anita's a smart woman. She takes one look at Tony and she gets it. She's not thrilled that this is the person, but she also knows that times need to change and if she has any, if she has any hope of finding acceptance in her in her community or in this country in America then she has to start it in her home you know so it's um it's a very it's a very in my mind common sense line that she takes this is going to cause a problem, but I'm going to support you. I'm going to help you through this. I understand why you're doing what you're doing. In turn, also working with Justin Peck and his team, Patty and Craig, uh, we it was very apparent to me from the beginning that while he was going to do his darndest to honor the legacy of Jerry Robbins and Peter Gennaro, um, that he is his own man, he is his own choreographer, and he has a very specific style, which I will tell you, it's very hard to, uh, to conjure out of your body on concrete. Um, but it's beautiful. Man, it's, it's beautiful. It's big, it's charming. His movement is uh, it's quite thrilling. Um, and it's human. You know, technology and, and, and vision um, and the times. Society has opened up uh, lanes that allow this story to have more than one face. This is no longer a male-centric story. We are very male-heavy, that is true. We're about two male gangs. The women typically are not in the, in the front, but this film and with Tony's adaptation of the original story, um, the women have a, an, an essential role to play. They take center stage and we are unapologetic about it. The views of the women in this story may not be popular, but they are important. And, and I think that's, that's a part of the moment that we're in as a society, that women need to support one another, even though we may not understand each other and our beliefs. We have to be able to find the common ground. And what I love about West Side Story is that it is a story about love, unconditional love. Um, it's about people in the margins who are just f trying to find their place in the world and hold on to love where they could find it. What I love about Tony Kushner is that he, he learns about you, he sees you uh, let's say me, David Alvarez, he first sees you and he starts to think of how you connect with this character and he'll adapt things depending on the person that's doing the role. So if another person had been doing Bernardo, he would have written a different Bernardo. So he writes for the actor that's portraying the character because uh, he gets a lot of ideas once he meets the actor that's gonna portray the character. So it's a very collaborative process. That changed all, the whole experience because I no longer was just dancing on the stage or dancing um, in at a Steiner studio. I was dancing in the street, you know, uh, up in Washington Heights. And it was an incredible experience. You see people looking outside their windows from up top, uh, looking at what we were doing. And it was an incredible experience to feel all of that energy. And on top of it, just to see the scale of this production, because uh, logistically, it must have been a nightmare to be able to shoot those street scenes with all this dancing and extras and everything, but the, this production has been so incredible that it just 
somehow everything just falls into place everything works out perfectly and you just show up as an actor you do your thing and then that's it <laughs> you know it was such a, an amazing experience to be in a room full of all these incredible artists that's the thing about this production is that I'm I've been so fortunate to be able to to be in a room full of people who really know what they're doing they are masters in their crafts which makes it easy for me because all I have to do is trust all I have to do is just trust what what they know how to do listen to what they're telling me and then try and apply their vision to my vision as well and give the best performance I can give according to that it starts from the top and it starts with Steven he he opened everyone he he was accepting of everyone with open arms in the sense that he didn't make you feel like oh this is how it needs to be he was very open to how everyone is and since this cast was full of highly young energetic uh, artists it was I think he was also excited that we were all so excited because he allowed us to be excited and then therefore when he saw how excited we were he also got excited so it was like this vicious cycle of excitement that we were feeding off of uh, so now that we get to uh, remake this movie and interpret it the way that we want to interpret it we want to make sure that we bring back the background and the culture of not just Puerto Ricans but also uh, Polish for Tony and Irishmen and uh, Italians so we wanted to make sure we brought the background and and personality of all of that together in, in this movie you know the idea of wanting to recreate anything iconic so especially that so iconic uh, you know, there's definitely trepidation that goes along with that. Um, but then, once I knew that, well, Steven, of course, and Tony Kushner were behind it, it's, it's only set up for success, I think, you know. And, you know, and the whole point is not to, not to replace what is already perfection in a way you know but instead build upon it and and continue to tell that story because it is so important it's american history riff is uh, someone of tony's past that has really provided a certain coping and love that sustained tony for a certain amount of time and has you know helped him until it no longer served him and uh, you know we really see i think where we are in this uh, where this movie takes place is that relationship really putting, being put to the test and, and seeing Tony choosing to, uh, you know, relinquish that friendship in a way. And Riff really uh, trying to hold on as much as possible. The Jets have been on the brink of losing each other. And so they've done everything in their power to try to just hold on to each other which is their family, the only thing that they really do know. And the nearest outlet and energy for them uh, happens to be the Sharks, you know, this group of uh, minorities that move in and uh, are growing in, popula in population and kind of what the Jets perceive as taking over. And it's a, it's a real outlet for these guys to um, bond in a, in a common enemy. You know, and it's, it's, not, it's not for the better, but it's really the only way that the Jets uh, kind of see for, to hold on to one another. Steven's fascinating in, in the sense of, like, here's a guy who literally has everything, right? You know, and um, if, you take, if, you, if you were to take away the past movies that he has done, the accolades, the money, the... I don't know, everything that went along with the identification of who Steven Spielberg was. Um, what I witnessed and saw was uh, <laughs> a person who is just chasing his joy every day. Every day he'd show up to set and just chase his joy. I've come full circle. I just can't believe it. I cannot believe what an extraordinary experience this has been. The sets are staggering. They're staggering in their realness. Uh, the, the, the music, 
We have Gustavo Dudamel, the conductor. The new Anita was very nervous to meet me, and uh, she's wonderful. She is Ariana. She she's a fierce dancer. She's way way more. She's a much better dancer than I have ever been. She's fabulous. She's really really good, and I love the idea that she's uh, part black. She's a, a mixed races, which I just think it's right. It's absolutely right. Uh, but uh, I, first time I met her, I said, let's have lunch together. Because they told me, they said, she is so nervous about meeting you. And uh, I tried to reassure her. I don't think it worked at first. She was really a kind of sort of like that, being very sweet and, and friendly, but uh, she was nervous. And I want to say, is it nervous of me? They were fabulous. And you know, it's all brand new choreography done by Justin Peck, who is brilliant. And it's, they've, re they've rethought all the numbers, which is a wonderful thing. Uh, uh, not having America, the number, done on a rooftop was very important to Stephen because that has become so iconic. I mean, to do another America on a rooftop, I don't know. So he very wisely put it on the street. That's the perfect word, it is epic. It's, re it's huge in so many respects. And when it's sad, it is, I mean, nobody can wring your heart like Steven Spielberg, come on. I remember, see, I go, keep, I'll keep always going back to E.T. because that broke my heart. And, uh, and he does that with this one. He just rings it. He rings the drama and the emotion out of this. And he knows how to do that. And you know how he does that? By asking the actors to pull back. And not, it's not about crying. And it's not about yelling and carrying on, though there's a lot of that, heaven knows. But it's about, with me, it kept saying, hold it back, Rita, don't give it away. Don't give it away, just hold. I got such headaches from getting to that emotion inside me and touching it and using it and then not allowing myself to express it, except in very, very subtle, intense ways. I've never been asked to do that because after all, I'm Hispanic, right? And it's, I will always, always be grateful to him for giving me that in this film. I truly believe you can't walk away from a Steven Spielberg set and, and not think that you are an equal participant in the collaboration of what is being made. That is a gift that he gives everybody. It doesn't have to be that way with someone who's such a master. Uh, but I think that is what makes him so special, is that everybody's included along the way. So that that aspect of it I will treasure, but also being on set and be able to, to be able to watch him uh, do, do what he does so beautifully and so effortlessly. And sometimes, you know, you see the effort, and which is actually a great thing to see, is that this is a person who's just working to get the job done in the best way he can. So that was a real just a luxury to be able to watch how how the nuts and bolts are, are put together. The choreography is breathtaking. The actors are astounding. You're in this you're in this gym. You're you you sense the time. You see these costumes that tell you everything you need to know about where and when you are, where this is happening. It really was a breathtaking experience to see that happen just uninterrupted. Well I'll start with the behind the scenes notion of this 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 great alchemy of so many different people, like you say, people who have never been in front of a camera, a lot of people with a lot of Broadway experience, maybe, a lot, maybe not a lot of uh, film experience. What you get, and diversity of course, being a big, big, big part of that, all, all, of, these, all of these things that create a novel um, core of, of uh, a workforce, for, for lack of a better word, you have incredible enthusiasm because it's all so new and so important. And there's a kind of a wide-eyed uh, wide intoxication of, of what we're doing here because of Stephen, 
because of West Side Story, because of the awareness of what this musical means in the canon of not only theater, but just kind of who we are as a country. Again, it's in our DNA, this story. So shooting this film, for me, and I, I've been a small part of it in a way, but when I watch, there's such an abundance of energy, and that comes just by virtue of uh, the median age of this cast, probably 23 years old. So inevitably, it's just going to be a force of, of energy. But there's such enthusiasm and there's such... Um, there's just such adoration and love for what we're doing. And sometimes, you know, ignorance is bliss in the sense that, you know, we might be capturing something that is so uniquely effervescent because it's, it's all, some of it is new to a lot of people. And I think that is a huge part of the, um, the alchemy that's going to make this really, really um, sore. To be able to tell this story right now with where we are and how we see borders, how we see walls, how we see color, how we see um, people moving across lines, trying to take root, trying to live better lives. These are all st stories, stories that will never go away, but are particular, particularly vibrant right now. And to be able to distill that in a two hour movie musical that, that puts that on display and it gives us a chance to take a look at who we are. Um, that's always a noble thing to do. And again, when the structure and the format is something that is not only tested and tried, but is just an extraordinary thing, a piece of work, a piece of art, that is going to be reimagined and, and has its own flavor and its own uh, sense of um, timeliness because of what Tony has done, Tony Kushner's done, and what Steven Spielberg is going to do with this film is going to be a very, I think, a very impactful movie. Working with Steven Spielberg has been, I mean, it's been this. <laughs> it's been just like, you do, you don't know. You don't know what someone's going to be like, and especially when they are that famous and that um, renowned of a director, you know, you don't know. You don't know if it's going to be, is it going to be really intense? Is it going to be scary? Are they going to be cold? Um, what are the expectations going to be? And Stephen is just a leader in kindness, in kindness and generosity and love and trust. You know, he took the time to hire a very specific group of people. And from that moment forward, he just cherished us. Rita is amazing. Watching her work is amazing. She um, she is a tough cookie and she is funny and she is a brilliant actress. Um, and I actually got to see, there was a beautiful moment where Rita was sitting next to Steven and Ariana was standing next to Rita and they were just deep in conversation together and it was seeing these two Anitas just the two of them in this complete heart to heart, the connection that they have found in this film together, uh, this rapport, this support of each other was so beautiful. Across the board, this creative team is the top of, it's this is the top. This is the very, very top. Tony Kushner, Janine Trissori, Justin Peck, Steven Spielberg, like we are just, you know, Paul Taswell, everyone um, is just like the top of the game. And so watching everyone collectively you know, watching them challenge themselves to make this work the best that it could be, and then all of us just, you know, bursting at the gate to meet them at that level and to just really give 150% every moment. It's really special. In a lot of ways, like, this experience has been so incredible. Like, kind of building this family with the sharks, it almost feels like getting so in touch with, like, my roots, my heritage. And being able to spend time with people, it's so funny hanging out with you. They remind me of my family in a lot of ways. Like, I don't know, they're just like wily and hilarious and just like loud. <laughs> I love it. It's fantastic. It makes me feel so at home. I think everybody was just so excited. You know, there was no, there was no room to be critical of the process or anything. I think we were just so stoked to be here. And ev we were all going through this experience at the same time, just... You know, it was it was fantastic, we, and we all wanted to support each other, and it was, it was the community was just so uh, energizing. And I think Stephen, you know, I, I think he he loved that energy too. He was so stuck. He would he just said, like, tells everybody stories, you know, a lot of stuff. I think he was really uh, he was really stoked to have people who are as excited as him to go on this journey. You know, everybody I think from this was 
you know, we were all experiencing something for the first time. Tony Kushner, the writer, he, he sent us all an email uh, during the rehearsal process that was just like, this is just an FYI. It's some background about your character's histories and upbringings that I put together. You know, he sent, he sent me one that uh, was about, you know, my relationship with Bernardo and, and uh, Anita and Maria. And that was, that was really, really helpful as far as like channeling the essence of, of uh, Chino. Um, yeah, and uh, I love I love the the way that he he put together the script. I thought it was fabulous because I think he I think he has a real knack for you know theater and a story like this. I I think it's naturally going to lend itself to being a little bit extraordinary, and I think Tony did a really good job of adding realism where it needed to be. And, and I really admire that. Steven's very first uh, direction to me was get it outside, make it real, make it, uh, make it on the streets and make it, you know, make you feel the life of San Juan Hill and of, and of, these, and of these characters. The destruction of this neighborhood displaces the community and forces, forces these different communities together and that creates the friction, that creates the drama of the, of the story. Um, Steven and Tony Kushner wanted uh, the site of this demolition to be a really active part of this story, of this telling of the story. Um, and so we very quickly got this idea that the, the sort of Jets part of the neighborhood would be the one that had just been knocked down or it was in the active process of being knocked down while this story is being told. So, uh, so, so we knew that we wanted to do a big demolition site of the actual pit, the actual construction pit, basically, um, to, to be a big set in the movie. It's incredibly exciting. I mean, it's, 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 it's really a, a joy to work with Stephen, and it's, such, it, you know, it's such, a, such a pleasure to come to work every day and to talk to him about, um, uh, about not, just, not just like the big set, but, but also just the little questions, you know, and it's, it's, it's a, how do you want to shoot this? And, you know, and we, we did a set last week that kind of sprang up out of nowhere, and I was like, you know, we need a shot to fill in between this shot and this shot, and it would be good if it, if it did this thing, and we could have a piece of fence here, and maybe another piece of fence here, and I don't know if it'll work, but okay, it'll be like that, and we, and we threw it together. And the process of going through that is, 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 is tremendously exciting. Um, and then, as you say, to, to be, we're not just doing the same thing. There's a, the, you, 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 you get a shorthand, and the conversation becomes faster, but it's about something new each day and each time, and and that's a real thrill. So to be, to be making a musical, to be to be working with Justin Peck, uh, to be working with Paul Taswell, and to have these 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 new con conversations about new things um, w within the context of this of this uh, relationship that's developing the shorthand and and comfort. The best. Rosalia is one of the sharks, is Anita's best friend and also is like a godmother to Maria. Um, I feel that my character is going to bring a lot of joy in the, the authenticity of a Puerto Rican that was born and raised in Puerto Rico. Um, she was born in a little town in Puerto Rico called Ay Bonito and then moved to New York with her best friend Luz and Anita. So it's it's gonna be fun. You, you will always see me with Anita, you will all, always see me with Maria. We're shooting now Dance at the Gym and it's it's a fun scene. It's, it's wonderful because it's the first time you can see um, the battle against the Jets and the Sharks. It's the first time you see the Jet woman, Jet man, shark women, shark men battling, but not with their fists, you know, battling with their talent, with dancing, with their different expressions of, of their culture through dance. So for me, that's amazing because uh, you also can see a little bit of each character and, and then that big moment where Maria finally meets Tony, you know, which is the uh, all the center of the story. It's it's been an experience. Like we've been here for hours and hours. We have we we've been rehearsing this number for almost two months, and we've always been doing it like one time, full full time. You know, like we do it from top to bottom. And here we're like 
cutting it to, piece, to pieces, obviously because of the shots and the angles, and that could be exhausting because we dancers, we need to warm up our bodies, and then all of a sudden wait 30 seconds, or I'm sorry, 30 minutes or an hour, and then come back. So it's been challenging, but it's been amazing as well because we've been bonding as a group, as a family, as a cast. And uh, I think we're in enjoying every second. We're so grateful to be here. It's uh, such a authentic cast, and we're, everybody is bringing something so special to this production, to this film, to this story, that it's amazing. Steven Spielberg, what can I say? Oh my God, I could talk for an hour. It's the, it, it was my dream to work with him. He was part of my vision board that I did when I was in high school. And I just, I, I, I'm just pinching myself every 30 seconds to remind me how grateful I need to be that my dream is just a reality right now. He is the kindest director, the, wow, he's a genius mind. The way he, he treats everybody with respect, with love, unconditional support. It's just, it's just incredible that someone that I've been looking up to for my entire life, that when you meet him, finally meet him and get the privilege to work with him, you can tell that, okay, this is how I wanna be. If, if at some point in my career, I like keep reaching higher and higher, I, this is my role model. We meet anybody's when he's kind of been disowned from his family and is looking for a home, essentially. He's sleeping on the streets, um, and he's kind of been following the Jets closely. Um, the Jets are a gang of white kids, white boys, and, uh, you know, they're, they're trying to state claim to their territory that's being taken away from the government, essentially, at that time. Um, and so we see this kind of lost soul um, hoping to join this gang of brothers, um, not only to be accepted into a family and seen as a unit, but be accepted for who they are as a person and, and accepted in their own skin. What is so special about it is that it was almost all of our first experience, you know, aside from Ansel, who's done many films, we're all kind of having these first time moments and we're all having them together. So, and you're right, like it, it helped in that we could be there and support each other. Nobody was, you know, oh, I've done this so many times and uh, I don't, you know, I don't care. It's, it's old news, you know, and not even the more seasoned folks like Rita or, you know, uh, Ansel were ever that way either. Everyone was always ready to give support or encouragement or, you know, advice even, um, which is, you know, speaks a lot to the group that was cast and the people that cast them. So I think seeing this face-to-face -face tragedy of these two opposing gangs and, and also the love story within it of like, we don't see these boundaries that are set. Tony and Maria don't see these boundaries. I think being able to see that love flourish and then sadly be taken away, I, I just shows us, you know, how important it is to learn about each other's differences and celebrate them and learn that, you know, we really just fear what we don't know. And we just need to all be a little more open and a little more compassionate toward one another, which I think we've all been in this cast, which is more than anyone could ask for. <laughs> yeah, around that time, around the 60s, um, the camera was rather static. The choreography was beautiful, but it felt uh, uh, um, uh, non-energized by the camera. So, so it was more almost like the classical Hollywood, uh, Hollywood musical, where we wanted to do something different without reinventing the genre, right? We still have people dancing in the streets, people singing in the streets, people performing in a very beautiful, colorful uh, uh, costumes. It's the same story between, between jets and, and, and sharks, but yet it has a modern interpretation. And, and, and the modern aspect comes from how active the camera became. Clearly, she's an iconic figure, not just in the world of Broadway and dancers, but for the general audience, you know? Um, so having her in the movie, made the movie much more special because 
she was almost like that continuation of the legacy that that it's not just remake it there's a legacy of of what the previous generation experience what the previous generation of actors and choreographers and, and dancers done and what we're doing here and there was a clear attempt to maintain that this is not this is not a new interpretation of the story so having Rita in the movie gives you that legacy to some degree Stephen's strengths come from you know bringing the best in you in every aspect not just in terms of your your work but also in how you carry yourself you know be proud and 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 respectful and 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 um tolerant you know and and making movie about lack of tolerance and and those 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 tensions was was even more it was even more important for Steven to to embrace everyone uh, and make them part of the movie. With the ability to move cameras and with Steven's astonishing, uh, you know, plastic imagination about how a camera can be used and, and how um, planes and angles of perception can be uh, um, uh, part of the dynamism of a scene, I thought this this could be like, you know. A, a marriage of uh, cinematography and um, uh, choreography, unlike anything anybody had ever seen. And that's what could be really, really exciting. And we're better than in West Side Story for that to happen. It has an interesting structure in that the, the, it has this, uh, at its heart, this enormously tender, um, very intimate love story uh, that takes place uh, um, uh, blossoms and dies uh, within the context of, of uh, a society under terrible pressure that's sort of um, both trying to hold uh, together to cohere and, and at the same time sort of uh, uh, there are forces that are ripping it uh, apart. Um, the, the, the melting pot is no longer uh, uh, working, and and it shows a, a, an America that's uh, in danger of atomizing um, because of racism uh, and because of a new sort of unwelcoming spirit. And uh, Tony and Maria's uh, astounding love story, which because of the glory of the music and the lyrics, I have to say. Um, uh, you know, it, it, the the musical presents you with two kids who fall um, into a, a, a kind of love that even for adults with adult maturity and expansiveness of vision is very rare. My greatest hope for it is, and I think Stephen would probably say something similar, and Justin and Janine and everybody in the cast is, we all took as seriously as we possibly could our, our stewardship, our, our brief moment of custodial relationship to a very great work of art that we were interpreting. And we didn't want to be slavish and timor uh, timorous about it and timid. We wanted to really engage with it like we would with any material that we were working with as artists. Um, but we... All of us love it very much, and what we, what I, my greatest hope would be, is that we, is that people will feel that we've um, served it well, and that we've given uh, the world a new version of West Side Story, not one that will replace the 1960 film, which should never be replaced, but just an, as there can be three or four film versions of Hamlet, and God knows, infinite numbers of. Uh, stage versions of Hamlet. There could be many film versions of West Side Story, and uh, I, I hope that if 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 I feel that at the end, it's going to feel great to me because I I love it very much, and I've done a lot of adaptations of plays and things, and and when you do it, you it feels very good if you think, oh, I've given this, I've helped to give this great work of art um, a new audience, a new lease on life. A uh, new way in for people. No one's shot dance on film better than him that I've experienced. And I think it's because he has such a natural ability of shooting people moving through space, shooting action. 
Um, and I think that skill set transferred over so easily into capturing um, dancers on film and movement on film and choreography on film. And I think that experience for him combined with um, just his genuine love for the golden age Hollywood movie musical and many kind of big historic movie musicals uh, created this kind of like perfect storm of his ability to do a movie musical of his own. I think the prologue is the very beginning of the film. So it's, it's a way of introducing dance as a language for these characters, as a, as a language for telling the story to the audience. So that's, it's a really important number in that sense because we're saying, look, this is a, this is a means of expression for these characters and it's gonna run throughout the whole story, throughout the whole film and join us to uh, embark on this journey together. Rachel's just beginning her career and she was so amazing to watch and get to witness her um, stepping up to the plate and um, and approaching one of the most challenging roles, I think, um, in American theater. And she did it with flying colors. And then Rita Moreno is just an icon. I mean, she's, she's like a national treasure. She, um, she's, I think it's so amazing that she, she was in the original film and now she's coming back as a new character in our film. And she's just so generous. She tells so many stories. She talks a lot about the original film She's, um, she's a good actor too. I think Steven and Rita have had a really good time working with each other um, because they've both accomplished so much and they're still very much open to, uh, oh, very much open and curious to the process of making films. West Side Story for me, uh, I think as, as for all of us, is, is part of our DNA. You know, in a way, you know, it's, uh, I think every single melody is so natural for us to, to digest, you know, the history, the music, the, the, what, what is this masterpiece, you know? Stephen has a very natural musical soul, you know? And, and, and he's a musician, he feels, you know, every, and he has an idea, but no to, no to change something, if not to improve something. And that is, that is a very unique quality, you know, as an artist. And of course, we have been talking a lot in the process uh, John Williams have been part of this process, a, a wonderful team of, you know, of musicians. David Newman is there too. He's, and, and rehearsing the choreography and, and rehearsing the singing of, 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 the, of, of, the, of the characters of, of every, uh, of Maria, or Tony, and all of them, Anita. Uh, it was a very natural process. Having Steven Spielberg there, you know, guiding, you know, showing, you know, the uh, what I love of, of him also that he's completely amazed about every single moment. And it's like, you know, with these beautiful children eyes, you know, of discovering something, but also wanting to, you know, to, to, to improve or to, to make more beautiful the things. And that makes the atmosphere a, 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 a very beautiful learning process of for us artists how to behave with what we do. You know, we have to always, always think about that, reflect about that. Our reflection has to be how we keep our, our soul open to discover you know, all the time new things in the things that we think we already know. And this is, this is a gift of life for me, 
every single song, every single dance, you know, the dance of the gym, um, you know, cool, all, all of that is so the overture, the, every single thing musically is amazing. The end, you know, the end of the musical that is not any lyric, you know, if not it's the prologue, is something really touching. Um, well, yes. It, it, I, I think every single part is my favorite, but Maria, number one. Stephen was, was very interested in redefining what, uh, how the story was told. Um, and uh, visually, uh, which was uh, most important for me, it, uh, it was important for Stephen that it uh, have a, um, a more realistic sense, a more natural sense, uh, that was more reflective of uh, the period and those people as they actually were. The first choice that Stephen requested for Maria was that he did want for her to have uh, a white dress for the dance at the gym. So that's the first time that, that Tony ever sees her, um, which makes sense. I mean, the, you know, the, the, she is represented, a representative of, of light and uh, innocence and freshness, uh, newness definitely for, for Tony. When I was designing the, uh, you know, the different characters of the different gangs, my intent was to create as much uh, individuality as I could from character to character. So that when you look at uh, all of the Jets, they each have a specific personality. Um, you know, although they're very close in age, that they resonate in different ways. And you get a sense that they're, you know, th that these characters actually, uh, and you, s you saw it represented in, in the photographs of the period. I mean, some of the research, you know, where, you know, each of these guys uh, has, you know, created their own individual character, you know, their, their own uh, specialness within this, uh, this gang, uh, there's a, you know, there's a hierarchy there, you know, there's one guy that, you know, you feel, you know, probably likes dressing, you know, in clothes, and there's another guy that, uh, you know, really doesn't, doesn't care to wear clothes much. Um, and then the different tattoos, you know, and how that would be used, and how that might be specific, or, uh, like on Riff, we, you know, he, uh, wears a, um, a, a, a saint medal, uh, and uh, a necklace that, you know, he, he came to us and said, you know, I'd really like to wear a neck, my mother's necklace, you know, or Riff's mother's necklace as a bracelet. You know, so it's like giving them touches that uh, resonate as, as real so that we can make them feel as real as possible. He said, you know, I still want to do West Side Story. I've always wanted to do West Side Story. I said, up to you. If that's what you want to do, do it. He's, he's a wonderful director, obviously, and he loves it so much. And so, you know, that's what bodes well about it. When he's, he's passionate about the piece, my guess is he's passionate about most of the movies he does, but he's certainly passionate about this one. And with his skills and, and talent, and, you know, I think it stands a very good chance of being a first-rate movie. His inventiveness about how to treat the songs and how to and how to change things in the story to uh, make it um, make it surprising. For, you know, a lot of people who think they know the piece are going to be surprised. We started in 2014, and Kevin McCollum really helped us. He had uh, the rights to the stage musical, and so he knew that we could possibly go to the estates and get the rights. So he and Emma Watts uh, at 20th Century Fox, and now part of Disney, uh, they helped us get there and they helped us get in with the estates. And we had a bunch of meetings and they were really not willing to give this movie over to just anyone. And so Stephen had to win him over. And it's interesting, I mean, he's the greatest filmmaker, one of the greatest filmmakers of all time, but he, he had to work for it. And they were impressed with what he had to say. They knew 
after talking to him for a half an hour what his love of the musical was and why he loved musicals so much. And so we had a few meetings with them. There were things that we couldn't change. There were things that we had to work around and we were in for all of it because we just wanted to make a fantastic musical. I always knew we would cast the film. I, I didn't know that it was gonna take as long as it took. Um, we had 30,000 people come in for all the roles, but specifically for Maria. We knew that getting Maria right was very important for us. And so we saw Rachel Zegler, and the second we saw Rachel Zegler, we knew she was special. She's standing on 60 years of a musical, and it's got a lot of history. And she knew that she had a lot of work to do and she did the work and she did the research and she was able to make the role her own and she was able to take Anita to a place that I think audiences are gonna be thrilled to see. The city of New York is a character in the movie and in order to bring that character to life, we had to really work hard and we had our line producer getting the locations for us with our UPM and we had Adam Stockhausen, our production designer, really going to great lengths to make sure that this area of New York looked great, and then if you panned over a little bit, it didn't look so great, and you couldn't use that. And so he he had to work with Stephen to find great locations and actually camera placement, which was really important. When you have Leonard Bernstein and Stephen Sondheim, you don't need a composer <laughs> because you've got everything that you need. But you do need a conductor. And John Williams gave us a great gift. He, he said, I know who's going to conduct this for you. I, I know who you should try to go get, and it's Gustavo Dudamel. And he was so right. Gustavo is the perfect person for this. He's Venezuelan. He comes from a Latinx background, and he, he's, he, he conducted the New York Philharmonic with such energy. I've never seen anything like it. He, he got up and he, he conducted and he was like levitating off the ground as he was getting the, the, uh, the musicians to do mambo. It was, it was like nothing I'd ever seen before. The energy in America, it's like, it's like robust and real and it's, it's, athletic and and it he just brought a different sensibility and a different um life and a life force to this music and it's it's i've never heard anything like it it's just really a beautiful version of west side story thanks for watching make sure to like and comment on the video if you enjoyed it subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to be notified when new videos are released Thank <laughs> you.